Hey everybody, it's Party Elite. Welcome back to Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader Let's Play, where we're currently at the scene of some tremendous violence, and also of our characters having leveled up. Before we take a look at the loot that these piles of bones have dropped, let's go ahead and take a look at character progression. Again, just as a quick reminder, this alpha is starting from the second act of the game. That means the first act is behind us and all the XP that was gained during the first act has already been applied and all of our party members have their skill points from their tier 1 careers maxed out. They are all at level 15 of their tier 1 careers, which means that they are now able to pick tier 2 careers based on which tier 1 careers they chosen. So for example, our uh, rogue trader over here, Mr. Trader himself, chose to be a leader. He got it to rank 15 and so now he's able to choose between Strategist and Vanguard for his Tier 2 career. Had he chosen to focus on the Soldier Tier 1 career instead, he would have been able to become a Veteran, or perhaps an Assassin if he'd gone with Fighter and got that to rank 15. So there's a, a bit of decision making that's already been made for us as we enter in in Act 2, uh, but still there's a lot of decision making to be made as we move forward. So with Mr. Trader over here, we're going to go with Strategist as our Tier 2 career. I think it makes the most sense. He's been calling all the shots, he's been making decisions, he's been telling people what to do, so Strategist kind of fits the bill, I would say. So let's go ahead and select this as our career, and as you can see, a relatively simple looking skill tree or skill path is, uh, is in front of us. But do not be fooled, because within some of these steps, you will see quite a few options. So first of all, as you can see, there's a set of six abilities to choose from. And separately, every once in a while, we'll be able to choose talents. And there are quite a few talents to choose from as well. So as we go further and further along, sometimes, yes, we'll unlock specific things based on the career. But otherwise, we will be able to customize our skills and abilities and talents to uh, our own liking. And, and, and that way, two strategists can play completely differently. Two adepts can play completely differently. They'll all have access to different uh, talents and abilities and skills and, 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 and play their own way. So don't be fooled by how simple this, uh, this path looks. There is a lot of decision making buried behind some of these clicks. Now, just to quickly explain, abilities are active abilities, things you actually have to uh, you know, trigger using action points. And uh, separately, we have, as you saw, uh, talents, which are passive abilities or, or modifiers for your abilities and skills. For example, a bolt weapon expert isn't an active skill. It simply allows you to use bolt weapons with, uh, as you can see, plus two to armor penetration. There's no dice rolls involved, nothing, you know, as far as skill checks or anything. You just get that plus two to armor pen as long as you land a hit. Similarly, we've got uh, swift movements over here, increasing the character's movement points by two. So uh, again, talents are passive upgrades to your character overall, whereas uh, abilities are active, you know, uh, actions you have to take in the middle of battle or, or whatever it might be. And uh, the same applies for skills as well, though for some reason I can't seem to be able to click into choose skill. It is what it is. And separately as well, yes, we'll be able to upgrade our characteristics too. So for example, if we want to specialize Mr. Trader into being more of a uh, melee expert, we might choose to focus his characteristic upgrades uh, down his uh, weapon skill path. Or again, if you want him to be kind of shooty, it's ballistic skill, etc, etc, etc. Anyway, uh, that's all that explained. I hope you don't mind the explanation. I figured it'd be helpful for anybody who's not familiar with the system. Uh, with that said, though, let's, yes, go ahead and make our rogue trader a strategist. Let's select this career, and uh, we get to choose our first ability right off the bat. And we have quite a few of these stratagem available, including uh, this one that has a different color, so I'm going to read it first. Blitz Stratagem. The strategist defines the area on the battlefield. All allies gain the ability to move into this area in the range of their current movement points plus three for one turn. Okay, so if we want everybody to, I mean, blitz and, and, and rush the enemy at a specific spot, that's where blitz stratagem comes in handy. Assault stratagem allows these strategists to define an area on the battlefield where all allies receive plus 10, plus the strategist's intelligence plus fellowship bonuses to their parry for one round. I assume, even though it just says intelligence plus fellowship bonus, I assume that's intelligence bonus plus fellowship bonus and again i explained this a few episodes ago but just to reiterate uh the two digits of our uh of our characteristics are separately important and of course important together as well the first digit of all of these characteristics is our bonus so five is our fellowship bonus and three is our intelligence bonus so assault stratagem gives us plus 10 plus three plus five 
to parry for one round for all of those allies within the uh, within the designated area. Just to, to show you where the math is coming from. Bulwark stratagem over here. All allies within defined area receive plus one to deflection and plus 10% to absorption for one turn. Okay, fair enough. That's not too bad. Grand strategist. Allies receive 50% damage less from the next attack. Movement points are decreased by three. Gra I'm not sure what grand strategist refers to. I assume maybe reaching the end of the tree makes us a grand strategist, or maybe there's a tier three career to choose. I'm not 100% sure, but uh, hopefully we'll get to find out over the course of this playthrough. But moving on, though, let's take a look at overwhelming strategy over here. All allies within defined area receive plus two to rate of fire of all their weapons for one turn. So, for example, using burst fire on our bolter should give us not three shots, but five shots instead. Or, you know, instead of four, it would give us six, etc., etc., which is uh, not a bad thing to have. Um, trench line strategy, meanwhile, allows the strategist to define an area on the battlefield where all allies receive plus ten, plus three, plus five to cover effectivity for one turn. Okay, that's curious. I really, yeah, how does that work? How How is cover calculated then? I'm rather curious, but uh, otherwise we have kill zone stratagem here. The strategist defines the area on the battlefield. All attacks against enemies in this area grant plus 10, plus three, plus five percent to hit chance for one round. Oh, that's huge. Our fellowship is five, our intelligence is three, so that's eight. That's plus 18 percent chance to hit for one whole round. Wow, okay. Uh, and then Blitz Stratagem we already talked about, right? So why don't we go ahead and pick Kill Zone Stratagem over here, because that seems extremely, extremely powerful. Uh, because, hey, if you increase your chance to hit, then you increase your chance to kill, right? So Kill Zone Stratagem, it shall be. We will accept that selection. And then uh, further on, we'll get to choose a skill when we next level up, which uh, I'm quite curious how long it'll take for us to actually get there. But for the time being, let's go ahead and accept that decision there. And it looks like we're about a thousand XP away. It does take a fair bit of time to, to acquire because, uh, again, don't forget, we are technically level 16 now, right? Where we're not in the early game, we're in the mid game. Nonetheless, with that done, let's go ahead and take a look at Abelard next. He is at present a fighter at rank 15, and I think it makes sense for him to be a veteran. He just seems to be the sort, I mean, look at him. He's very decorated. He seems to be rather grizzled. And uh, just based on his behavior and how he speaks and how he advises us, uh, I think veteran makes the most sense. And uh, the first thing we actually get is right tool for the job. So it's predetermined. And what does this do? If the veteran makes an attack with a weapon different from the last one used, they gain a stacking bonus of plus five to weapon skill and ballistic skill until the end of the combat. To a maximum of four stacks. Okay, so he, if he keeps going, you know, uh, uh, gunshot, uh, sword swing, gunshot, sword swing, he gets to get plus five to weapon skill and ballistic skill, which... Uh, ref reflect his ability to hit with a melee weapon and a ranged weapon, respectively. So that's cool. The more he, he keeps switching, the, the more likely he is to land hits. And then when a veteran gains maximum stack bonuses, all their subsequent attacks deal veterans' weapon skill divided by two damage with ranged weapons, and veterans' ballistic skill divided by two with melee weapons. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, oh, that's interesting. So, so again, weapon skill is what this rule set uses for melee, and ballistic skill is what it uses for range. However, when we get to maximum stack bonuses, it seems to flip what value is used for damage for which type of attack. Yeah, because uh, ranged weapons do weapon skill divided by two, which would be, uh, what is that, 12.5, let's assume rounding down. Sorry, no, divided by two, what am I, the terrible math, 22.5. Let's call it 22 by rounding down. 22 damage. That's a lot. Holy crap. And uh, ballistic skill divided by 2 is, uh, what, 17 damage, right? 17 times 2 is 34, um, which is not bad. But but again, that damage is done with melee weapons and because uh, it's flipped back and forth. Okay, cool. Yeah, sure. I mean, we're going to select the veteran career either way, and we automatically get, yes, right tool for the job. I assume that is a placeholder graphic. Nonetheless, we will accept this upgrade and then move on to uh, Idira who is an adept at level 15, allowing us to get either assassin or strategist, given that she is a sniper. I think it makes sense for us to chase after assassin. And actually, what is this? 2PR. I'm not sure what that stands for. Is it profit rating? I'm not 100% sure. I'll have to uh, I'll have to check because we don't have it ourselves. So, uh, or is it? Oh, of course, she's a psyker. It's her psy rating. My apologies, my apologies. It slipped my mind that she's actually a psyker. I keep forgetting that she has her uh, lightning uh, capabilities as well, as well as other things. But yeah, that's her psy rating, which comes up every once in a while. You'll have noticed that uh, such and such is impacted by the psyker's psy rating times two or whatever it might be. So that's the number that's looking at. Either way, 
as I was saying, I think it makes the most sense to make Adira into an assassin. She is sort of acting as that sort, even though sometimes she's not about precision. She's about, yes, using a lightning strike to kill four people at the same time. But nonetheless, assassin it shall be. And she also gets uh, uh, an immediate automated first, uh, it looks like, an ability? Yes, it's an ability. The assassin marks a single enemy with a personal extermination mark, which activates next turn. Whenever the assassin attacks the marked target, they trigger the mark for 10 times the assassin's perception bonus percentage bonus damage. Then the mark disappears. Okay, so 10 times the assassin's perception bonus. Our perception bonus is 4... Wait, 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 wait. So we get 40% bonus damage? Holy! All right, that sounds great. Uh, I mean, either way, Assassin is the obvious choice, I think, for Radira. So let's select that career and accept that. Thank you very much. Moving on to uh, Argenta, a soldier, of course, uh, at rank 15, no doubt. And Veteran is the only option we have available as a result of that. So let's go ahead with Veteran and we'll get access to right tool for the job here as well by default. And again, there is customization available down the line. And as you can see, uh, there, are, uh, there, there, there are different options available. Uh, there is a fair bit of overlap for sure, but uh, I, I believe they are different between the different careers. Uh, nonetheless, let's go ahead and select a veteran over here. Accept that. Thank you very much. Uh, meanwhile, we have Cassia, who can either be a strategist or a vanguard. What does vanguard get? Vanguard. Unyielding beacon. Whenever someone attacks a vanguard, unyielding beacon ability gains one stack, up to a maximum of vanguard's fellowship plus weapon skill bonus stacks. Each stack increases the vanguard's resolve by one. Okay, okay, and then we have an option of an ability as well, defensive stance. The vanguard gains plus 10, plus unyielding beacon stack bonus to parry until their next turn. If a vanguard is attacked by a melee weapon, they may perform up to two parry actions. Successful parry grants the vanguard an attack of opportunity, wow, with a negative 20 penalty to weapon skill test. Her weapon skill isn't that amazing. To, to, be, to be frank, she's not the greatest fighter. Um, disposal. The targeted enemy immediately provokes attacks of opportunity from everyone except for the vanguard. Oh, hello. That's a powerful ability. Fight me. Each enemy within a three cell radius around the targeted ally must pass a willpower test or choose a vanguard as their priority target for one turn. It can be applied on allies affected by voice of command ability from any distance. Okay. A wall of rockcrete. The vanguard and all their allies within a three cell radius gain two times unyielding beacon stack. Uh of temporary wounds okay so if we build up the unyielding beacon stack uh, then we can add temporary wounds which is hp uh, they use the term wounds in this system and uh and in uh, dark heresy and stuff as well uh okay okay vanguard isn't that bad then uh strategist we've already got one going so why don't we go ahead and for experimentation's sake it doesn't make sense it doesn't make sense to make uh, Cassia a vanguard. We'll have her be our backup strategist, sure. We'll select this career, and as for her first ability, why don't we have her uh, doing something else? Because we've already got, you know, Mr. Trader uh, doing the kill zone stratagem. So here instead we could do the assault stratagem, perhaps. All allies receive bonuses to their parry. Overwhelming gives us a uh, higher rate of fire. That could be pretty cool. Using overwhelming stratagem alongside kill zone stratagem. That sounds pretty powerful. Sure. Overwhelming stratagem for Cassia seems like the right choice over here, and we'll accept that upgrade. Whereas Pascal over here, as an adept, is able to choose between assassin or strategist. Damn, so the only person who could have been a vanguard is uh, is Cassia. So I guess we're foregoing that for the time being, as Pascal ends up as, what, an assassin perhaps? Hmm. I mean, I suppose so. A melee assassin doesn't, doesn't really make sense. Doesn't really make sense, but... Uh, Hey, it is what it is. He's, he's going to pick Assassin, I think. Let's accept that, get that uh, extermination mark, and, and see how we can use these new skills and abilities and traits to our advantage. Nonetheless, that's character progression for you folks. I hope you uh, enjoyed that. And in the future, we'll, of course, go through it a lot more quickly. This time, I had to explain how it works and what some of those things mean. And I also had to highlight literally everything. In the future, we won't need to do that. As uh, we can now move on and, yes, take a look at some of this loot. Hopefully there's some juicy stuff to pick up over here because uh, it was a pretty juicy fight. My goodness, it was a big, big fight. Uh, what do we have? We got a uh, sword, another sword, just basic swords it looks like. We have a shotgun over here. It was not terrible. I don't know. I, was, I, just, I see no value in it. A couple las guns. And again, this was pointed out in the comments, and you're absolutely right. I shouldn't just consider the individual damage of a shot over here. Like, sure, uh, a las gun does six to eight damage, but... Uh, with two AP, it can burst fire, and if that means four shots, and all four of those shots hit, let's say, 
you know, on target, that's four times on the low end, six damage, which is 24 damage. So even though, yes, one hit does less damage than, say, a plasma pistol, because it is able to do a burst fire, it might actually get more damage done. I've seen that mentioned in the comments, and you're absolutely right. It is something to consider, but truth be told, for the time, I think everything's working kind of smoothly as is, so I'm not going to chase after this, though now with the addition of uh, some of those new abilities that add to rate of fire and stuff, it's more of a serious consideration, I think. Uh, for, for the time being, I think we can we can keep it in our in our cargo. We've got some flak chest plates now. Uh, again, not really worth it. And these are auto pistols. And again, five to nine damage. But if you if you do a pistol burst there and you actually shoot six shots and do six times five damage, that's uh, thirty damage, right? So that's no joke. Let's let's go ahead and pick up some pistols. Actually, do we do we need any? We got a, we got a shotgun already. We have uh, another sniper rifle. We got quite a few pieces of equipment just hanging in there. Uh, but sure, why don't we go ahead and pick up a couple of pistols and take a look at these Enforcer-like -like carapaces as well. They're irrelevant to us, so pack everything as cargo. And let's go ahead and take a look at our inventory and just see if there's someone who could actually be uh, carrying a pistol alongside, like, their melee weapon or something. So why don't we go ahead and, yeah, get that auto pistol on here alongside the, uh, the chain sword. And that should work nicely in tandem, again, for our ability that allows us to stack our... Uh, uh, our, our weapon skill and, and ballistic skill, right? So that's a good look as well. I mean, that's pretty dope. And, and we'll just see if the uh, rate of fire and pistol burst works out as uh, as, as well as I imagine it might. Uh, separately, though, who else do we have? Idira, sniper rifle, and then she does have that very same combination in her in her second uh, you know setup. So there is that. Uh, Argenta, what have you got? You're fine. Both of your weapons are, are two-handed. Cassia. You're fine as well. She actually dual wheels pistols. One LAS pistol and one uh, auto pistol. That's kind of... Okay, that's kind of sick. <laughs> that's kind of dope. Not gonna lie. All right, cool, cool, cool. And Pascal over here. Uh, he only has the one slot, eh? I guess his mecha dendrites and stuff. Maybe take up his other s slots, like in, in, in lore, so to speak. And, and what is this locked slot? Because that is an equipment slot. Like a... Like, like, a, like a weapon set slot so i'm curious what that is because uh everybody has it maybe it gets unlocked later on I, either way uh that's everyone's setup done I, I don't think anything else needs to be assigned so let's go ahead and, and 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 close that and take a look at maybe some more loot i'm sure there's more to be picked up and, and what is this why is this being highlighted and why can i not click on it from any angle hmm. maybe it's something we could have blown up or something nonetheless uh that's all well and good we have a couple of explosive barrels that we're not going to deal with we have a couple of things to explore. We've already taken a look at this. Why don't we head on down to here and take a look at some of these uh, boxes. As over here we see some very nice signage. I actually quite like the uh, the art in the game that's like kind of just environment art. Like these decals and stuff like that. It's quite nicely done. The container is airtight. You get the feeling that this was originally a standard box for transporting non-fragile cargo. And then was sealed manually. Okay, fair enough. We've seen that before. The container is filled with something heavy. It is difficult to discern what it is exactly. Xenogear, I assume. Again, a uh, un very uncomfortable truth got revealed about uh, Jay. It seems that she is actually uh, trading in Xeno artifacts. We've taken her on board our team and our ship to give her an opportunity to repent and, uh, and, and just be better. Though that has caused some friction, I think, among our party members. They, they did comment on the strange company I've started to keep, so... We'll, uh, we'll have to be careful about uh, overdoing that. Ooh, can we go down here? Doesn't look like it. All right, looks like this area has been cleared out, so I suppose we could head on out from this warehouse and uh, take a look at some of the other quest options that uh, we might have left behind. If I do just very quickly pop open our journal, we'll see that there are only uh, two quests still left to do uh, for Chapter 2. Hunger's Hand, which is about supplying footfall with provisions from the Agri-World Yanis, which we can't get to yet because of Tattered Spirit, which is our ship being, at present, uh, pretty badly damaged. Now, I do wonder if it'll just let us know when we're ready to go, or if I have to keep going back, uh, wait for the completion, periodically checking on the situation at Footfall Dock Alpha Row. So we do have to go and personally check things out, but before we do that, I do think we need to do a bit of exploring in the Shadow Quarter still, again, based on some of the comments I saw uh, in the comment section of the previous episode. So why don't we go ahead and uh, and do that. In particular, it seems as though we might have left behind quite a few uh, opportunities, or at least conversations, at uh, the bar, the uh, the Adeptus uh, Am Amasekis? Adeptus, Adeptus Amasekis. Yeah, for some reason, the name just doesn't stick with me. What is 
Like Amasek. Oh, okay, I get it. Amasek, right? Of course. Still, not 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 the kind of name that'll stick with me. Let's uh, let's head on in and, and see uh, what we potentially again left behind here. Just going to do a quick once over now that there isn't the pressure to take care of uh, you know other people's needs and wants and uh, and safety. I suppose. I guess there's some loot to be picked up, and I'm sure there are conversations to be had as well. This guy is wasted. Dude needs to be cut off. Depleted batteries and some cyber crypto. We'll pack him as cargo. Short thing. And it looks like we can't actually go down there. So uh, let's keep our explorations to up top over here. Guard some more goods that uh, might need stealing. What was that pink highlight? Or was it just a... What was that? What was that? Is there a skill check involved over here? We're about to find out. Doesn't look like it. Nope, we just got everything. Uh, bottles, brick, sticks. Okay, cool. Pack his cargo. Nothing important. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, maybe. But... Uh, in, 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 in our current circumstances, not so much. Let's go ahead and try a tech use over here. I'm pretty sure we already tried that like three times, failed every time, and Cassia has failed as well. A real shame. A genuine shame. I really want to know what's in there. I can't believe it's such a difficult check. I cannot believe it's such a difficult check. Oh, we got a bunch of citizens back over here, some refugees. Can we speak to any of these guys? This vagabond. Nothing, uh... Nothing important. What about these citizens? You got anything important to say? Nope. Nothing important to say. What about the uh, the barkeep over here? Dude's uh, otherwise preoccupied, it seems. More refugees and citizens back over here. Anything important to say? Nope. Nothing of value. These suspicious types. I could have sworn they'd get up to something, but uh, they didn't. When we tried to speak to them, nothing uh, nothing came of it. Not necessarily these specific guys, but, uh, but, but, but people nonetheless. This is a decanter about cheap Amasek. We've seen that before. Over here, what do we have? Leftover of pitiful food, right? Just again expressing the uh, the circumstances here. But it looks like this is a named character who is talking about seemingly the end of the world. Gorde Skatov. I don't recall his name. I do think we missed him previously, and I wouldn't be surprised if he's the one some of you were talking about in the comments uh, that we've left behind. Again, in character. I figure we're still waiting for our ship to be repaired. So well, we've gone to the pub to see what's up. It's where you 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 find rumors and and, and learn about the happenings of a place, right? So. A worthwhile uh, endeavor, and it seems we've come across somebody who uh, seems rather troubled. So, what does Gorde Skatov here uh, have to offer us? The flabby man in worn clothes is sighing sadly over a glass of murky booze. Only when he looks up at you do you notice his eyes, large, piercing, and full of sorrow. A stark contrast to his unkempt appearance. Could it be that someone actually wishes to keep me company? I will see about that. He takes a closer look at you. Not just someone. It's Lord Von Valancius himself. Yours is an ancient and glorious line, your lordship. A number of magnificent structures built on your ancestors' orders, both for defensive and decorative purposes, remain in the Skyrim sector. They keep your dynasty's memory alive, despite the fact that it has long since focused its endeavors in a different sector. Allow me to introduce myself. Gorde Skatov. Architectural historian. Well, you look deeply despondent over something. What happened? Gorde sighs heavily. Ah, here I go again, pouring my heart out to have you disappear in ten minutes, just like everyone else before you. But all right, here is the story of Gorde Skatov, the unluckiest historian in the Imperium. I was born two sectors away from here. My family was quite influential, which allowed me to dedicate myself to my great passion, the history of imperial architecture. I spent a number of years studying every scholarly work there was to find on this art, and then, once I had inherited my family's fortune, I traveled and documented the development of architectural thought on different worlds. Until one day, oh, that accursed and blessed day, until one day I came into possession of something quite special. Gorde pulls what looks like a book or an album with a homemade leather cover out of his bag. Both the pages and the binding look well-worn. Here it is. My undoing. This is an authentic booklet titled Dwayne's Design. One of the thousands that were printed centuries ago in the times of Footfall's construction. I'll keep listening. Footfall's founder, Lord Parsimus, was obsessed with his creation's grand future. This booklet describes in detail what Footfall was meant to become upon its completion. Dozens of asteroids turned into glorious palaces and temples, massive bridges spanning the void itself, and the marvelous flying buttresses, 
and the archivolts of the exterior arches, the elegant arrangement of balusters, and the interior. Polyphoras ten stories tall and more than a mile long. Cyclopean light tubes that catch the light of Furibundus and use it to brighten the halls and the hearts of the asteroids. Stained glass windows and mosaics, bar reliefs and statues. Engrossed in his own description, Gorde stands up and starts tracing the outlines of arches and galleries with his hands. We keep listening. Emerging from his reverie, he catches himself, blushes slightly, and loudly flops back onto his seat. I apologize. I, I got carried away. But you must understand how deep an impression this booklet left on me when my young self picked it up. I simply couldn't think about anything other than footfall. I was ready to give my life just to see this incredible station. And of course, no matter how hard my parents tried to dissuade me, I still gathered all my savings and set out on a journey. It is no easy feat to cross two sectors, especially for a common citizen, albeit one who has some resources at his disposal. I had to change one ship after another, at times being forced to stay on transfer worlds, waiting for a vessel headed in the right direction or for warp disturbances to subside. The voyage took me a total of 107 years. In real space time, of course. For me, it was much less than that, somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 or 35. And then, after all those years, having spent all of my savings, I reached my dream. And what did I see? A dump in place of the exquisite portico. Metal anthills clinging to the columns. The marble tiles pilfered by paupers to use it as cladding for their hovels. Gorde hangs his head. It's been a dozen years since I came here, and I still haven't recovered from the shock. I had suspected that not everything from the booklet would exist in reality, but I never expected to see footfall in such a sorry state. It is like stumbling upon the horrible, decomposing corpse of your beautiful beloved. Jesus Christ, that's a goddamn simile. Nonetheless, that's quite depressing. It reminds me of uh, what we call, uh, I think it's a Paris Syndrome? I think Syndrome. Paris something. Paris Syndrome, I'm pretty sure. Uh, which is actually the result of how Paris is painted at as this like um, center of culture and art and all that stuff. And I mean, don't get me wrong, Paris, of course, is the center point of a lot of these things. Like, absolutely. I'm not, uh, not saying anything in opposition to that, but uh, Paris Syndrome is basically, uh, Paris has been sort of painted as uh, this, like, I don't know, utopia almost for many people, uh, particularly in Japan. Uh, so what ends up happening is when uh, Japanese tourists in particular uh, go over to Paris, many of them are taken aback by the reality of Paris, where, yes, it does have, of course, all this history and art and culture, etc., etc., but it is also a metropolis, so it does also have, you know, the darker parts of being a metropolis, and it's not a utopia, right? What city is? Um, and so, uh, and, and that actually causes a fair bit of shock, and it can cause people to go spiraling down into depression and stuff. It's it's a very real thing, to the point that the Japanese embassy in Paris uh, has people employed uh, to deal with people suffering from, from Paris Syndrome. It's a very real thing, and it's kind of funny reading Gorday here uh, talk about his expectations of, uh, of this station and, and, and what actually came of Footfall just feels very uh, reminiscent of a very real-world example. Nonetheless, what do we say? What does Mr. Trader say here? That is tragic indeed. I wish I could see Footfall the way its creator envisioned it. Yeah, not untrue. But you're an architectural historian. Is what happened to Footfall not part of its history? Oh, being a bit of a... But it was kind of a not the politest thing we could say. A compelling cautionary tale. If there was a book on the folly of chasing wild fantasies, you would take up a whole chapter. God damn, we don't have to be an <laughs> we don't have to be that bad a person, right? He's uh he's he's already down on his luck, right? He hasn't done anything heretical, right? But I will say, but you're an architectural historian. Is what happened to Footfall not part of its history? Uh, I think uh, given my position in uh, the Imperial Army in the past. Uh, I think history has, you know, got its place, whether it's about victories or defeats, and uh, and so, yeah, is this not a part of Footfall's history? Gorde strokes his goatee in thought. Yes, Footfall's current appearance, slums fused together with the remains of majestic palaces, is a unique phenomenon. 
it would be curious to observe if other places have taken after it, thereby solidifying it as a new style of architecture, or if it still remains a local oddity. My word, you certainly know how to provide an unexpected perspective on things. Well, that is why I am a strategist. Be that as it may, I just wanted to say thank you for hearing me out. Over the dozen years I have spent on Footfall, not one person has hung around long enough to listen to my story to the end. It's such a delight to have shared everything that's been weighing on my mind. I'm poor as a church mouse, but I still have something to offer you as a token of my appreciation. After studying the booklet thoroughly, I discovered something interesting. A ciphered message scattered throughout its pages. Taking the form of a riddle, it described certain places of interest on Footfall. I believe it is the work of the booklet's creators. What if these riddles lead to something? A wondrous discovery? I will gladly share what I've been able to learn with you. Have you not tried to make this wondrous discovery for yourself? I have, of course, but I am an old man who is blind in one eye and can barely move his legs. I never found anything, but that doesn't mean there's nothing to find. Very well, tell me about the places these riddles lead to. The first location from the riddles isn't far from here. It's a bridge that was supposed to go through the center of this district and into the void towards the neighboring asteroid. Only a couple spans were built, and even those lie in ruins. Still, if the cache survived after all those years, it is there somewhere. Okay, so there is a there's a bridge not far from here that was supposed to go through the center of this district. Okay. The second location is the Lantern of the Great Cathedral. A lantern is a small tower on top of a dome. You've seen Footfall's atrium, haven't you? The whole atrium is just the nave of the former little cathedral. The liege's entire so-called palace would have fit inside what was meant to be not but a single room. The great cathedral, had it been built, would have been even bigger. But alas, its construction was just getting underway when Duane died and the work stopped. The lantern from its dome, however, had already been built and survived. It was brought inside the atrium and dubbed the Chapel of St. Drusus the Warrior. Alright, very well. I'm fairly confident we know where that is. And that's all I know. I wish you luck in your search. Well, I have to go. Good luck to you, Gorday Skatov. Very well, an interesting uh, wild goose chase. Hopefully it's actually worth something. But is that truly everyone we can speak to here? Uh, might be. I was led to believe there were two conversations we missed out on, though maybe I misunderstood the comments, and for that I do apologize. Just taking a quick look around. Oh, there is actually something over here. Oh, ho, ho. all right, glad I checked. Again, I should really pop open the map more often just to see if I've actually missed entire sections of an area. So my apologies for uh, the haste I sometimes apply unnecessarily. But yes, there is stuff to check out back over here, including additional goods. What do we have here? Nothing of import. All right, pack his cargo then. And uh, let's uh, yeah, investigate these thugs in here. There's an awareness check over here. These guys don't seem like trouble, but once I step in... Oh, we're still fine. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Bastards. What? 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 All right, hang on, hang on. There's a whole conversation happening over here. This is actually important. Oh, by the throne. That's him, isn't it? The poor sap who got his tongue cut out by the Anvers. That's the one. I think he was from the Casbelica. Well, his troubles are over now, the dude that exploded. The hell was that about? Well, what's going on over here? Dude was carrying a scrappy auto gun and uh, an axe. Well, we'll pack those as cargo and take a look at what actually went down over here. Mike, what the hell? I better myself through my service. The upholstery of the dirty sofa moves slightly. A soft hissing can be distinctly heard from the depths of the furniture. So we succeeded our awareness check there. I guess there's a extremely venomous snake or something. Fair enough. Nonetheless, gain some experience there for Argenta. Or is it across the board? I assume it's across the board as Abelard succeeded an awareness check and found what? These goods? Surely it must have been something else. Or no, I guess it was these goods. What do we have? What do we have? Again, nothing particularly important. Is that really what you spotted with your awareness check? Seems to be. Okay, fair enough. Uh, but I do want to check really quickly if we take a look at the character screens over here uh, and take a look at progression. 8598. Eight. Looks like experience is gained collectively. Okay, fair enough. I just wanted to double check to make sure. Typically, that is how these games work, but uh, just wanted to be 100% certain. Nonetheless, let's uh, keep moving on. 
There's one more room back over here, a citizen who is floating in the air, foul heresies afoot, and a lot of thugs and a named character as well. So this could be Trouble. Nonetheless, Trouble Seeker is my middle name. Let's go ahead and see what this Riza character is and what's happening over here. Very shady. Very, very shady. Riza, who are you and what are you doing here? The woman looks to be in her 40s and she is surveying you with interest. Her right eye appears almost black against her dark skin, while her left eye emits a greenish light filtered through the smudged lens of a prosthesis. Her arms are tattooed all the way from the base of her shoulders to her knuckles. Looking for something specific? You're buying or maybe selling? Don't be shy, just ask. Old Riza knows all kinds of folks. My boys will fetch you anything your heart desires. Who are these boys you work with? Riza lowers her booming, raspy voice. You heard about how the Clipper St. Cognatius got hit recently? The cargo was cleaned out, everything of value taken. Well, that's my boy's handiwork. Alright, what kind of goods are you willing to buy? Tech is always the best. If it's broke, no sweat, we'll fix it or take it apart. And if you score something so nasty that your fussy everyday traders won't even look at, fear not. Just bring it on over, leave it to me and my boys to find the right buyer. That sounds like Xenotech to me. Let's see what you have to offer. Uh-huh. The first thing we read, Eldari Plasma Grenade. For those of you that don't know, the Eldari are an alien species, and so this Plasma Grenade is very much Xenotech. Does a lot of damage though, and a decent bit of pen too. Regular frag grenades, intoxicating elixirs, medikits, melta charges, we got a couple of those. Militant's Cloak. All enemies within a two-cell radius of the wearer of this cloak receive negative 10% penalty to dodge against melee attacks. Ooh. Very fancy. 19 profit factor, though. That is like... Oh, boy, that's a lot. Mobile Extraction. We already have a lot of that. Mono, monofilament Grenade. Deals 15 rending damage with a penetration of 3. Damage increases by 3 and penetration increases by 2 for each cell further from the epicenter. Oh, interesting. I guess it shoots out monofilament wire. And so the further away you are, the more it, like opens up and, and, and hurts you, I, I guess, is the explanation. Not 100% sure, but rend I'm trying to remember how rending damage works uh, in, in the game. It, it is a type of damage, it's in the rule book. I just cannot remember it off the top of my head, but like chain axes do rending damage. I think chain swords also do rending damage. Uh, it might be only chain axes, but I think maybe both chain weapons do, uh, do rending damage. I can't remember for the life of me right now. Uh, but uh, maybe we'll get to find out if I pick up a monofilament grenade. It's kind of cool. 0.5 profit factor only. Yeah, why don't we pick some of those up? Those, that, those sound kind of cool. Well, I'm currently dealing with somebody who deals with uh, with Xenotech. I'm going to see if I can maybe kill her. But uh, not before we pick up some of the, uh, the, 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 the things that they have that are of value. Five of those. Pirate chainmail. No, let's not skip ahead. Navy swashbucklers coat. This coat grants the wearer a plus 5 bonus to parry and plus 10% to absorption against melee weapons. 20 profit factor. That is way too much. Uh, as a huge, huge buff. Plus 5 bonus to parry and 10% to absorption against melee weapons. That's, that's not insignificant, but I don't think we need it. Orthlac Pattern Stub Revolver. 7 to 11 damage. Rate of fire of 4. Oh boy, stub revolvers are pretty cool. How much profit factor? 11. Oh my goodness. Pirate Chainmail. Not terrible. Uh, power Axe over here. Oh, boy. Scrap Box worth 10 profit factor? What? I guess scrap is extremely important. Mezoa Pattern Sniper Rifle. 14 to 20 damage, 3 penetration. What is our sniper rifle? 14 to 18 versus 14 to 20. But we, we can't even afford this. The profit factor is uh, beyond what we have. This, again, regenerates over time but we need to give it time to regenerate. Uh, sure, why don't we go ahead and purchase all these? We could sell some stuff, I suppose, but none of this is worth anything. I, I do wish these were listed just like this is listed, so I could actually see uh, the value of these uh, of these goods. Like, we have this armored body glove, but I do believe we want to hold on to that. This casing chest plate, for some reason, is worth absolutely nothing. Uh, I'd expect it to be worth something. Same thing with this chainsword, but these are all pretty useless as far as trade is concerned, I suppose. Nonetheless, let's go ahead and... Uh, make this deal. I'll purchase some of these uh, monofilament uh, grenades. Yes. And uh, and then I will punish her for dealing in Xenotech. Very risky uh, move we're about to make over here. We're about to learn if this game actually allows you to uh, 
play things a bit more uh, open-endedly, let's say. Let me just see if there's anything else to say to Riza really quickly first. Welcome back, she says, raises her glass to you, smiles and winks with a prosthetic eye. I better be going. All right. Nice doing business with you, she says. Riza, Riza, Riza. Riza, Riza, Riza. You're not allowed to deal in these kinds of goods. I don't know what to tell you. We're going to pull back to over here because there seems to be a decent bit of cover. We're going to get uh, Abelard uh, to move right up to here. Watch, the game doesn't actually let us uh, pull this off. But uh, Abelard and the Rogue Trader himself are going to go ahead and uh, flank Riza on, on both sides and, and, and see if we can't uh, get something done over here. I do wonder if I shouldn't pull back and, and, and pop a plasma single shot in this group. But before we get into that, let's make sure we actually have our grenades in place, right? Monofilament grenade can be popped over here and over here. And why don't we go ahead and get uh, Argenta using some as well, because she's already uh, carrying a bunch of stuff. Pascal, sure. Let's go ahead and get you carrying some monofilament grenades as well. And Avalard, uh, no, you're capped. Idira, nope. So I uh, guess Cassia it is. Okay, good stuff. Just in case. But again, like I said, watch. We're not actually going to be able to do uh, do anything over here. Pull the Rogue Trader back a little bit. And uh, from over here, so close to somebody, from over here, we're going to try and pop a Plasma Overcharge shot uh, in this general area that should hit Riza and this thug as well, if this is actually an option. Moment of truth. Let's see. Nothing I can't do. Nice. Aww. Except not. We caused damage, but didn't actually do anything. Alright, fair enough. Have it your way, game. It kind of what I expected. CRPGs have these kinds of limitations, right? Where you can't actually do whatever the hell you please. Uh, but it would have been nice. It would have been nice to uh, to pull that off. Pascal, let's go ahead and get tech use on this thing to pop it open. Pick up some uh, cargo. And, uh, and make our way out. Man, I was really hoping we could trigger a fight over here, but uh, it was not meant to be. All right, all right, okay, okay, fair enough. It's too bad. It just feels like a, a new challenge for me. feels like an opportunity, a missed opportunity there. But maybe they're actually a quest giver, and we just uh, haven't haven't got a quest yet. It's okay. I know some of you are probably wondering why the hell would you shoot him, party, or or why why the hell would you shoot her, party? She's she's got lots of interesting goods to offer. Around these parts, uh, I try not to min max. I try not to optimize in that sense. I try to optimize role play first over. Uh, over, you know, where we can make the most uh, uh, money or, or have the best numbers uh, at times. More often than not. 99% of the time. Over, I think we go to the Shadow Quarters, though, to uh, try and solve this strange riddle, right? So, uh, let's check it out. Fortunately, we didn't actually have to memorize those riddles because uh, they are actually written out in here somewhere. Rumors, I guess? Uh, cash in the former Lantern Footfalls. Great Cathedral was never built. The turret that would have blah, 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 blah. No, cache in the old bridge. Let's look for this one first. The destroyed bridge in the Shadow Quarters may contain a cache left by the Builders of Footfall. The destroyed bridge. So let's make our way to the center, it said, right? So like over here, I guess, roughly. Uh, is this the destroyed bridge? No, this is an actual, this seems like intentionally uh, left behind this gap. Where is there a destroyed bridge? Watch, I just am completely unable to find it. This seems like a poorly constructed temporary bridge. Oh, you know what? This, this is a destroyed bridge. Because this would have gone all the way across to where? Up, like, here or something? Seems to be. Maybe. Check my map over here. Something up over here as well. All right, fine. Let's go ahead and, and, and poke up to here and, and see what uh, the game has to offer in this general area. A lot of these people taking care of roaches and, 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 and bugs in general, I assume. There is some stuff up over here, right? We saw, I thought, yes, Anver thugs and infected thug. There's stuff over here, but I have no idea how to actually get here. We can get up top over there, but not uh, not in here. Maybe eventually we'll find a way in there, but uh, for the time being, we'll keep exploring uh, up over here and look for this damaged bridge, which I think is... Uh, is this thing. I mean, look, that, that, that is definitely a destroyed bridge, but I'm not sure what I'm looking for once I'm up here. Take a look at this journal entry again. Rumors. Cache in the old bridge. The destroyed bridge in the Shadow Course may contain a cache left by the Builders of Footfall. Just taking a look further around over here, just in case I've missed something elsewhere. Again, this looks like it's supposed to be a bridge. Maybe there's something uh, further over. Let's see. 
hold down tab as well to make sure I spot anything that can be spotted. Up over here is where we had our initial fight. Don't recall there being a bridge up over here, but uh, doesn't hurt to check, I suppose. And I'm sure something, well, I imagine something would pop up in the log if we, uh, you know, just happen to walk past it and, and an awareness check succeeds. Got some goods over here. Melt a charge. I'll go ahead and take that. Yeah, sure. Collect that. Some goods up over here as well. Oh, this has to be unlocked with tech use. But no actual value in there. Sure, pack it all. Uh, I mean, I guess it's an opportunity to gain XP. Not even that. All right. <laughs> why Why make it so difficult? Or why imply there's something of value there when there clearly isn't? What about this? What, what was this again? Nothing I can do? What's the what's log saying? Nothing. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Moving down this way. There's something to investigate over here. Which I think we already... A well-worn poster with a call to serve the Imperium. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Lots of workers, more pamphlets, a servitor. What's the servitor saying? Nothing. Nothing at all. Wastewater, laundromat. Literally walking through the entirety of the uh, the shadow quarters. I will be unable to find this uh, this bridge. Head right to the center over here. I wish I could zoom out a bit more just to just to get a better uh, picture of what's going on. Is this a destroyed bridge? I mean, it kind of feels like it. But that's we've already. This is where we went already. We've already explored this angle. Right? They, they're all the exterminators and the, uh, where'd they go? Infected thug and stuff. He was down over here. So yeah, we've already been up that way. So why do that again? Bunch of citizens down over here. Citizens back over there as well. And down this way. We have this bridge, but like... Okay, let's, let's, let's try. Is it, could it possibly be that uh, that on the nose that is like literally this bridge that'd be kind of silly right we can't get back there okay fair enough let's make our way over to this side maybe there's something over here or again maybe I'm just wasting my time in, in the entirely wrong place again remember at one point in time we were supposed to go over here but the journal entry told us to go up over there so uh, I don't necessarily trust what the game says sometimes but yeah it said there was a bridge a broken bridge in the center of uh of this sector which is you know here ish but I, I can't seem to find anything got these stairs lead us up to here nah you know what can't seem to find anything why don't we head on back to the uh the dock and see the situation with a tattered spirit just in case there has been progress made over there i would like to uh, get an update and then we can uh, resume chasing after these silly riddles yeah, just otherwise not sure where the game's trying to send us. This is uh, this is old. It wasn't time to destroy these tiles. They were definitely pried out with purpose and diligence. I mean, is it because the thing is hidden somewhere here? Like, we saw this a long time ago. Oh, hello. That's new. That's new. What does logic say here? Come on. Nothing? Oh, it's down there. Okay. How do we get over there? Got these stairs over here. Stairs over here. How do we get down there? We gotta get through. We gotta get into this space over here. Okay, interesting. The question is, how do we get in there? Or is it uh, locked behind story progression or something? Because I can't just click down here and get us down here. Looks like we're moving, but... Nope, just to the edge, it seems. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll have to come back to it, I think. We'll have to come back to it, or I might explore a little bit between sessions so I can more smoothly actually get us down there. For the time being, why don't we go ahead and, uh, and, uh, head on over to the, the dock just to see the situation with our ship, because otherwise we're going to spend forever down here. Onwards to the dock. And what do we have here? Lord Captain, I am pleased to report that the repairs have been completed. The void ship is ready to depart footfall. The crew is waiting for your further instructions, and there are also a number of issues that need to be addressed. Well, very well. If we wanted to, we could make our way out, meet with officers on the ship's bridge. It'll take time to heal the injuries. What's that? Sorry, hang on a second, hang on a second. What's that? Tattered spirit. Uh, doesn't 
No, okay, fine. And here it just says to coordinate the next steps. The Lord Captain must hold a meeting with his retinue. Meet with officers on the ship's bridge. Okay, fair enough. Uh, I, I guess if we wanted to, we could do that next. Um, it's kind of interesting. We didn't actually see this from this angle, so I was like, what What the hell is this? This is completely new. But, uh, but no, this is uh, familiar grounds, right? We've already investigated almost everything. There are a few things left to do on Footfall, though, right? There is, uh, of course, these riddles that we're looking at right now. Cash in the old bridge, cash in the former lantern. There are also rumors about the Von Valencius dynasty that I don't think can be addressed just over here. I imagine those are, you know, among multiple planets, perhaps. Space Marines and the Coronis can't be disliked solved here. Xenos on the Rampage also can't be solved here. Calamity on the Von Valencius Industrial World is something we can perhaps pursue if we actually get onto uh, our ship and, and start making some moves. Uh, and, and apart from that as well, I think supplying footfall with provisions from the Agri-World Yanis can't be done until we're on our ship and organizing some of our, you know, trade duties and, and, and things like that. Uh, but yeah, no, there, there's stuff to do here still. There, there are these caches to chase after. There is this... Uh, this set of loot over here that uh, involves some kind of riddle. And there was a separate riddle here as well that didn't end up in our journal, but we came across a note that had like very specific instructions, right? So I'm wondering if we stay on Footfall for a little bit longer to try and solve all those remaining elements, or if we leave. Our work here is kind of done. Everything important, at least, is kind of done. And uh, there is money to be made and... Uh, well, trade deals to be done as well, right? Let's not forget our actual purpose in uh, in life. Uh, make lots and lots of money. While also, on the side, eliminating heresy however we can. But that's just a personal thing. Either way, folks, I would love to hear your thoughts on uh, what we do next. I have some plans in my mind, but uh, always open to feedback and, and, and opinions in the comments, of course. But beyond that as well, of course, folks, this is what we're going to call it a session. And uh, we'll, we'll tackle all that next time. As always, a... Massive thanks goes out to all of the channel members and patrons who've been supporting the channel on a monthly basis. Y'all keep us alive and running smoothly. And of course, a big old thanks goes out to each and every one of you for watching. Until next time, cheers.